<laughs> Alrighty, it's been so long, man, I forgot. Give me one second. I forgot how to stream, man. It's been so long. Ah, right, where there's uh how are you doing guys? Yeah, I changed my office a little bit. Can you guys hear me well? You can, I suppose, right? Yeah, I guess you should be able to hear me, right? Well, uh, yeah, uh, it's been a, uh, what, when did I stream last time? Let me actually give it a check. It's been so long, man, I forgot. I forgot, uh, wow, well, so long, but it's been, it's been what? It's been more than a month, right? Since I streamed, let me see live. Last time I was, yeah, it was a month ago, a month ago, yeah. Alrighty, well, uh, how was everyone? How are you guys? How was, uh, how is life? What are, what are you up to? I'm gonna spin out, spin off now. The project, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's been so long since I actually haven't coded and programmed my network past two weeks, I think. Um, so let me actually go ahead and, uh, Uh, if you mean finished programming network, no, no, not really. I don't think I'm ever going to finish that project really, right? Uh, so I've just been doing some other things. I just didn't, yeah, didn't, I just didn't feel like streaming much, to be very frank with you. Uh, but yeah, now I'm here with you, fellas. Uh, uh, just give me one second. Why is my chat not part of my OBS? Give me just two seconds. That's a little bit weird. We miss you, man. Okay, that's good. Good to hear. Uh, I'm happy. I mean, I'm back for sure. Uh, yeah, it's just I've been, I've been, um, I've been doing some other things. I've been focusing on some other things uh, lately. Um, but now I'm back. Um, no, I'm not actually creating courses. I wasn't creating courses. I was, uh, I was uh, just doing the project of stream. Uh, I had uh, I did a lot, lot of work I've, uh, off stream on programming network. I re-implemented some systems, um, and uh, I sc converted the project to TypeScript, basically uh, the front end. And I was uh, supposed to do the same with the back end. So it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work there. Uh, give me two seconds. Let me just do it like this. I'm gonna move this thing here. So, so yeah, if I share my screen over here, give me two seconds, main. Um, but uh, yeah, before we, before we, con uh, con let's, before I actually start coding, let me just uh, configure this stuff back because it's been a while. So where is my chat? Why is my chat not uh, where it was before? Scene list mode, grid maybe, nah. Give me two seconds, uh, list. You guys can hear the music, right? Just making sure that everything is still set up as it was before. It's a bit low, okay, got it, got it. Cool, docs, uh, custom browser docs, stats, multiple output, YouTube chat. <laughs> it's not metal. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Mm, pop out chat. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. And I'm just going to create another custom doc over here. And I'm going to say Twitch chat. Yes, apply. Accept. And then I'm going to do something like this. He's back. All right, let me just, okay, let me just try out one thing. Oh, okay, I see. That's weird, okay. 
I'm almost there with you and then we can start hacking and coding. OB, good evening, buddy. How are you doing? Uh, Twitch uh, programmer network, right? What's my Twitch programmer network? Yeah. Last thing and then we can start coding programmer network. Just setting up my OBS and stuff. Uh, Vex, thank you very much, buddy. I hope you can uh, catch me up later if I'm still here. Uh, what did I want to do last? Uh, authenticator, right? Yeah. Authenticator. And then Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Yeah, here it is. 274. All right, cool. Very nice. All right, I think I'm good now. And somebody's saying something on YouTube. Good evening, YouTube. Just gonna put this thing in here. And yeah, let's uh, start coding actually. Um, I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna open this. So, Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, let's go back here. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, so I was saying, yeah, so I did a lot of work offline uh, since I haven't been streaming, right? I redesigned a lot of, uh, implemented a common system from scratch. Let me actually open the right projects. Uh, and then I did a lot of work on Louis GUI on this, sorry, on, on our core front end library, right? While I wasn't here. So basically, if we go to that now, um, where is the programmer network uh, project? Yeah, so if we go over here, while I was off, while I wasn't streaming, I did work on Yale, right? So we implemented a bunch of awesome stuff in here. So I did a lot of components, uh, we redesigned. So I'm just actually going through what I did last. And then I improved the, the UI and the program network. And as I said, I uh, re-implemented the whole common system. So I can actually take you through the, through the common system. Just give me one second. Uh, yeah. So. And now, yeah, the front end is now, I believe, 100% written in TypeScript. So I also did that pretty much if we take a look at that. So where is the front end? Yeah. So yeah, so you can see I haven't done anything the last two weeks, but we are now basically fully into TypeScript. And um, yeah, so so the common system has been uh, fully, I implemented it from scratch fundamentally. So if we go to that, it's a common section. Um, so that has been uh, implemented fully from scratch. The common system we built before wasn't necessarily that great. Um, and it's been, it's been built in a very clever way, just so I can unit test it easier. So essentially I have this use comment actions uh, custom hook that um, uh, that is basically a wrapper around my a store, around my uh, service for uh, my RTK, my Redux RTK. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the um, what is it called? The... Um, uh, recursion that we had before is now a lot better. So in simple words, yeah, uh, this has been improved a lot since, yeah, since I've been streaming and stuff. And I actually don't know where I am right now because I have a lot of stuff that I haven't merged yet to production and I haven't done that in a very long time. So let's actually take a look at that because I have a huge PR. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's this PR. There's basically 5,000 lines of new lines and I removed a lot of code, right? So you can see there's a bunch of just random uh, commits. So let me actually, let's go. It's been, since it's been a while since I've been with you guys, uh, let me actually see where we actually stopped. So, uh, and what do I have to do so we can merge this? So, okay, let me actually just click around a little bit as well. 
Shoot, shoot them. Good evening, buddy. How are you? Yeah, luckily nobody reviews this stuff, so... Luckily nobody reviews this, yeah. Alright, uh, and as you can see, so I, I changed the, the design, like if you take a look at production right now, if you go to programming network, you'll notice that it's uh, quite different, right? So if you go quite, it's, it's, it's different, right? So if you go to production right now, actually, let me just make sure that I, um, that I pin this thing, I actually forgot about it. Is this stuff even working anymore? I'm not actually sure. Wow, that's weird. Maybe, maybe the bot isn't even working anymore, but... Uh, Give me one second, and good evening, everybody. Just gonna do this, and I'm gonna pin that, I guess. Ah, there's something wrong, okay. Huh, interesting. Let me try here, it's a little bit weird. I'm just testing, because some of the things, they don't seem to be working. Uh, Let's try this again, yeah. Can I pin it here? Something went wrong, please try again. Okay, Twitch is lagging up a bit, okay, whatever. I'm fine, got inspired and started building a mobile app with React Native, my turn into proper. Nice, man, that's amazing, that's awesome. Alrighty, so, um, so I actually don't remember, it's been two weeks. I don't, I don't remember where I stopped with this refactor, but I believe that uh, for the most part, it was fine. I had some issues here, I believe. Yeah, so some few of these things are no, still not working, yeah? Uh, this has been drastically improved. Play one game. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah, man, I, I told you that I'm not gone. Told you that I'm not gone. I miss you guys, uh, likewise. I missed you guys, likewise. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. About a month ago, I asked you about what... Uh, let me just read the question. Let's, let's chat a little bit. Uh, give me a second. About a month ago, I asked you about what can I do if my current uh, work when my current job is uh, out of little development and simply boring because... Uh... I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Masa. Um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean, uh, but if you're... Uh... What do you think about over... What do you think about overemployed? Um, I'm not actually sure what that means, overemployed. You mean having multiple jobs or whatever? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of, uh, I'm not having, I'm not a fan of of these uh, sketchy things, right? I, I think that's not fair, right? I think it's not fair uh, for the company that's paying paying you, right? So, you know, I, I must be honest as always, I, I, I don't think anything good about that, right? Um, if you don't like your job, uh, try to identify why, and uh, if you identify why, uh, then either quit it or find another job, right? Yeah, but I mean, your company cannot force you to be there, right? You can still uh, resign if you want, and uh, you know, so... <laughs> It's not that they're keeping you, right? So, of course, uh, yeah. Uh, or, of course, like, tell that to the company, and if they're fine that you have two, two jobs, then, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, but uh, try, not to, try not to put yourself in a position where your reputation is in question, right? Because uh, reputation is very hard to build and very easy to, and it's very easy to ruin forever, right? No, I didn't move. I reorganized my office, uh, so it's the same place from where I streamed before. It's just uh, I just reorganized it basically, um, so it looks a little bit different now. 
but I, and J Jador, good evening, buddy. So yeah, so I just reorganized the place because I'm playing a lot of music lately. So I kind of reorganized it a little bit. You know, I started playing saxophone as well. So yeah, it's... Um... But Massa, you know, I would say uh, simply, you know, try to solve that in a professional manner, right? Because the world is small and make sure you know that... Uh, make sure that you, you know... Make sure that you don't ruin your... Uh, make sure that you don't ruin your uh, reputation, right? By making silly... Silly, I wouldn't say mistakes, by making decisions that can cost you more long term, right? So, you know, I would always say be honest whenever possible with your current employer and try to find some uh, something that you can work out so you have fun at work and, and you grow. And if you can't, just uh, quit and uh, find something else. Good evening, uh, Varad on YouTube. Right, so that's what I would do. Um, that's my take on it. Uh, That's what I think, at least. Yeah, alrighty. I mean, the thing is, of course, I mean, the thing is, like, you have to be careful, right, about money, because uh, you, you have to find something that uh, leads you, because you can always earn more money, right? Because if you if you are always driven primarily by money, then you will be changing jobs always, right? Because the next job always is going to earn you more money, right? So of course we all uh, we all we all crave for money. I want more money. So it's, uh, there's no human out there that that will tell you I don't want more money, right? But uh, it's it's a dangerous path to primarily stick on to, right? Because money money is uh, you know it's it's it, nobody ever says hey I, I don't want more money, right? So, so that is the thing. You have to draw the line. How much money do you actually need to be happy, right? Because you will, you can always make more money somewhere else, right? That's just how the market is. You know, if you take a job today, next job is going to make you more money, right? So, that is always, uh, that is always how it is, right? What is this? Uh, what is this TS error that we have? Let's fix that. Yeah, uh, I see. I think it shoots them uh, you are on the right path. The best approach is always reading the official documentation, especially React. Uh, React has uh, the, the new website that they've built has an insanely good documentation. Honestly, like very, very good documentation, right? Uh, I don't think you can find a resource on the whole internet that's better than this documentation, right? And you can almost compare it with the Do Go documentation, Golang documentation, right? So Golang has an amazing... Um, thing uh, of course uh, the thing is uh, there is it's it's not uh, it's not uh, very simple to give this advice right some people are very methodical and they like the university type of approach bottom up of learning right some people like to be thrown into the problem they like top down right so it depends what type of personality you are i i i also love to build things so you have to find a mixture between you know learning concepts and building right but it's it's if you if you are a person that likes to build things then it's always better to throw yourself hey this is what i want to build and you try to build that and the, then you move backwards right then you figure out okay how how do i do this right uh Well, I mean, I can give you fundamentals of, I'll give you front-end fundamentals, I'll I'll give you now fundamentals of whole front-end that ever existed, okay? So bear with me. So this is what, let me give you fundamentals of every front-end framework ever made in two minutes, okay? Let me do that. So, so this is how it works, right? And this is literally enough to understand the whole front-end, right? So you have the hard DOM, you have, you have DOM, right? So you have document object model. This is like hard HTML, let's call it 
hard HTML, right? So, and then we have JavaScript, right? And then before we had all of these fancy frameworks, right? We would manipulate this DOM with JavaScript, right? We would get some element. It would be document dot get element by ID, right? And then we would do something to that element. We would either add an event listener to it. We would either change it directly. We would insert some text in it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Uh, but then, yeah, as obviously you know, as the complexity of the websites increased, right, as we started building single page applications, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right, we needed to create these frameworks. We, we aggregated all of the knowledge we learned for 20, 30 years of the browser. We aggregated them into these small utilities like React, Vue.js and stuff, right? So we can manipulate this DOM easier, right? So we don't really have to think much about this DOM, but we think about the data, right? And then the data renders and then the DOM updates, right? So it's really all data driven, right? But then at one point we realized that this DOM, this HTML page, this document, this HTML document grows really big, right? And then it becomes inefficient, right? Because we need to figure out, we need to keep some state, some uh, footprint, some schema of this hard DOM, we need to keep it somewhere. So it's, it's faster to check what has changed, right? So we have this DOM, it would be very inefficient, right? Whenever something changes, that we use the DOM API, document object API to model API to run through all of this crap, right? So what we then did, we invented virtual DOM, right? Then we invented the virtual DOM. And this, this virtual DOM, which is all, is just a JavaScript kind of object representation of this hard DOM, right? So virtual DOM is just JavaScript object or JavaScript objects, right? It's almost like JSON, right? So now when, when something changes in this hard DOM, we compare these objects because it's a lot faster than interfacing with the web page using the DOM API. Because keep in mind uh, that uh, JavaScript language and DOM are not the same thing. DOM is not part of JavaScript language. JavaScript language has basic constraints like functions and statements and loops and promises and stuff. And the browser has the DOM. So you have the JavaScript language. You have JavaScript language, right? And then you have the DOM. This is the DOM, right? So these two have to interface. They have to talk to each other. The JavaScript using the, the DOM API interfaces with the, with the document, right? Well, now JavaScript actually has this virtual DOM and it stores the state of your page as a JavaScript object. And then this um, reconciliation algorithm that React team created, it's called the reconciliation algorithm, does the checks, right? So you have this, you have, you have a tree or a graph, right? That looks like this. You have a tree basically, right? And that tree represent your DOM, right? So basically you have, imagine this is a div and then inside of the div, we have two paragraphs and let's imagine inside of a paragraph, we have a span, right? So this is essentially what this virtual DOM is. We store these trees and then, you know, we compare them. And then this is what reconciliation algorithm does. It traverses this virtual tree and then tries to be quick and figure out, okay, this paragraph has changed. So I'm just going to render this paragraph here, you know, but because this paragraph has a span inside of it as well, I need to be careful not to re-render the span as well, because, you know, f technically these two things are the elements, right? So this is basically the whole fundamental of React and React really is just a view library. So it's a very, very simple library, which is why React.js is so popular, right? Because uh, React fundamentally is not a framework like AngularJS, which is a full-fledged framework that comes with a React, uh, sorry, that comes with a router, with the modules and huge TypeScript support and decorators and all of that fancy stuff, right? So uh, React is just a rendering library. And going back to the old JavaScript days of jQuery, right? Uh, React is just a rendering library, which means it just kind of figures out what to render on the page, right? So you could, of course, you could build your own version of React, right? Where you would have some data 
So you have some data, right? Some, you know, state, which is an object or whatever. And then using the, the DOM API, you figure out when to re-render the, the page. So this could be an interesting project, right? If you're saying, hey, I would like to understand front-end, let's not say React, let's say front-end. What you could do is you could say, okay, let's imagine that I have my own div in here that has an ID of app, right? And how can I now build my own little React JS, right? Or call it uh, uh, Fiat JS, right? And then this is where you could start, right? So you could say, okay, I'm gonna, uh, you know, do like, uh, you know, document dot query selector, you know, app. And this is where you could technically start, right? You could now render certain things inside of this div when some of your data changes, right? So you could have a state here of some sort, right? And then you could build your own rendering, rendering function, right? Here, write logic here. That re-renders when this state changes, right? And then you could, you know, have a two, two states, right? You could have a previous and current state. So you could have, you know, current state. And you could uh, have a previous state, right? And then you could, of course, use Lodash or something. You could, you could use something like deep comparison, right, or whatever, check what, I mean, of course, you cannot build in 20 minutes the whole React library, that would be silly, but then you could, you could, you know, uh, you could use your render function then, so you you could have a button somewhere, right, when you, when I click this button, I want some of this stuff to update, etc., etc., right, so this is the right way if you really want to understand, but fundamentally, this is whole front end summed up in, 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 a, in a single explanation, right, so every single library out there does more or less exactly the same stuff. No matter if it's Vue or React or Angular or whatever, right? You have some div, like React has like, again, all of these modern frameworks, right? And then you have some engine, some rendering uh, uh, logic that figures out, okay, this object is different from this object. So, you know, using the DOM API, go grab that object there and re-render whatever is inside of that, right? Um, I think people give this whole thing too much of um, importance, right? Because the DOM in the modern browsers is incredibly fast, right? So people usually talk about performance of these things, but most people, most developers out there have, have actually never built an app that's um, that needs this performance. So in simple words, the reason why we're using React isn't really a performance for the most part, or Vue or Angular. It's it's really just this uh, abstraction, this encapsulation, right? We are encapsulated in, in, in a very finite amount of ideas, and then we can just keep reusing the same ideas. So the reason why we use frameworks isn't necessarily performance. People, a lot of younger developers, they talk about performance, but it's more about hiring and, you know, a lot of other things. But fundamentally, yeah, this is um, component is is just a function, right? So uh, there's nothing really. That's why I say there's nothing really special about any of these frameworks, because all of these things are just functions, right? So uh, you know, uh, 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 if you have a component called button, right? Uh, you know, if you if you have a component called button, right? I mean, heck. Even this button, native button in HTML, right, is just a function, right? So that's why same in React, right? Or any of these frameworks, right? A component is really just a function that returns some object that translates into HTML. And you could even build this for yourself as an example, right? It's not rocket science. You could represent, so you have to ask a fundamental question. How do I, how would I represent HTML through JSON, right? So say that you wanted to have a, uh, an object called button, right? Well, what would you have? You would have something like this, right? Or let's call it an element. This is what the React and all of these frameworks do. You have some some concept of an element or a node. I think in in in, in React is called React node. Then there's a concept called element, which is more generic, more general, right? So fundamentally, right, you would have some function that that, that generates the JSON that this, that can be easily translated into HTML, and I'm using very simple words. I don't want to use fancy words just because it is a, a very simple concept. It's like I have some data, you know, some HTML represented as JSON, 
well, what do you do? This is your input. What is the output? Well, the output is taking that JSON and turning it into HTML, right? So that is a, that is really a, a, all that there is. Now, of course, I'm not saying that, of course, a lot of these modern tools, they're very clever. A lot of super intelligent guys and girls have built amazing things to make it very like smart and stuff. But um, uh, so, so, so this is really what, what, what all of these things are like that's, and I think this is a very important lesson for everybody because don't overthink these frameworks. Like people talk about Svelte, React, this and that. It doesn't really matter, right? Why doesn't it matter? Well, it doesn't matter because all of them fundamentally have to use the DOM. They have to use DOM API. Why do they have to use it? Because there's no other API still to interface with the document object here, right? accept the DOM, right? So, so, so it's, it's not the conscious decision. It's rather a limitation, right? But this is the document. Uh, this is, sorry, this is the document that describes your HTML page. And you can even see, I mean, for 30 years, this document as well represents the actual XML HTML page, right? So, so, so at the end of the day, this has been in the browser since dawn of time, right? So, um, so this is really what frontend is fundamentally. So if you want to kind of internalize this more, say, okay, let me build a little library, few functions that I can describe through JSON and then build few functions that's going to take this in JSON input and convert that into HTML payload. And then I'm going to render. You don't have to worry about performance, right? So don't worry about reconciliation. You know, did I re-render -re the whole thing or not, right? Because for example, 15, 20 years ago, I was literally building apps like this. We had a jQuery. So you, uh, 15 or 20 years ago, you had two choices, right? A lot of people, because we all sucked, right? We directly manipulated the DOM. So we didn't, we were so stupid that we didn't even store the state, you know, in JSON objects like var, I don't know, my state is whatever, but we would literally have something like, you know, I have this div and inside of this div, I have a paragraph that has the text. So, so what we would do back then, we would get the, we would literally say, okay, let me, let me get my paragraph, right? You know, I, I'm just going to be very, query selector didn't exist back there, but I'm just primitive example. And then I would check, hey, what is the state of this? And then as the time went by, we realized, hey, it's actually very stupid to keep the state as part of the uh, view, right? We, we, I need to, if I keep my state in the, let's say JavaScript and the objects and arrays and stuff, that's gonna be great, right? Then we, what we started doing, we started saying, you know, well, you know, I have my books in here, you know, a book has a title, you know, and it has, uh, you know, uh, author, right, whatever. And now I can actually keep my state in here. So when I change this state, I'm going to call some render function that's going to update this thing. What does it mean it's going to update? Well, you know, the source of truth of state is always going to be my data. And I'm going to have some mechanism, some function that's going to run when this data changes. So when I call, you know, add book uh, somewhere, some function, and I push uh, the book to this thing. Let's imagine this does like books.push new book, right? Then I had some logic, you know, what we, I just called the render, and then it makes sure to align, you know, the, the HTML state with the data. We didn't care much about reconciliation and all of that stuff. It was pretty much just... Uh, we don't care, just re-render the whole page if need be, but it was a lot easier to build applications. And, and then we went from these things to AngularJS 1, Ember.js, Knockout.js, Vue.js, React.js, Stencil, and million, five billion of others, right? Uh, but this is the history of how front-end development uh, um, Exactly shoots them, yeah. So the DOM is, the, exactly. But at the end of the day, so, so basically front-end development is like this. How can I use the DOM API the least? So this is, this sums up the whole front-end development. How can I interface with the hard DOM the least amount of time possible? If I, with every optimization of me not needing to render something on the page, check its success, right? So, so if you ever wanted to build a new framework in JavaScript and, 
uh, you know, there's probably 16 already came out since I started this video. Um, this is the question you would ask. So, okay, what is, why am I doing this, right? And I'm sorry, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm sorry, I was just uh, uh, answering this, this uh, right? But this sums up really the front end development, right? And then now you can add a lot of details in between, you know, Vue.js and all of these things, right? As the new browser APIs were coming out, you know, then a lot of these tools were getting smarter. They were using, you know, more clever API. Browser has amazing APIs. You would be surprised what you can do with HTML5 history API, uh, object assign, and a lot of these awesome things, right? You can build your own little framework in, in two hours, right? Like that does, you know, if you use HTML5 history API, right? You can, you can build your, you know, your own uh, router in like two hours, right? Because every single router out there, React router, Vue router, they're really underneath using, uh, using HTML5 history API, right? So, so again, it's not rocket science. It's not that hard. It's actually fairly simple but you have to kind of get to know why the things are as they are today. And uh, the reason for that, of course, is, is that we had transitioned from directly working with the hard DOM, then we moved to being data-driven. So when my some state changes, update the UI, and then we started with single page apps and all of these fancy things. All right, that, uh, yeah, that's it. How many total users in Programmer Network? A little bit more than 1,000, but since I stopped streaming a month ago, barely, barely anybody signed up, to be honest. So it seems that uh, people find the Programmer Network platform mostly when I'm streaming, and uh, that really is that. Uh, shoots them, my pleasure, man. It's a little, uh, my best man, good evening. Hi, I'm Junior Developer, and sometimes I don't feel like programming. Did you ever have periods of burnout? Um, I mean, I saw your chat fusion app, which was really clever use imitation. Matt Dog, I'm gonna show you that exactly. And good evening, buddy. Uh, of course that I burned out. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we, a lot of us, we have a hard time uh, acknowledging, uh, you know, uh, good evening, everybody. A lot of us will have a hard time acknowledging that uh, when we burn out, but uh, of course I burned out many times. I've been doing this job. This is what 17 years I'm working. So 16, 17 years. So of course I did, but, uh, uh, you have to find the balance. There is really no, um, there is really no response to that. Uh, programming is not that important uh, in a programmer's job, believe it or not, especially as you grow in your career. So you have to find the balance. Uh, have other things besides programming, right? Um, let, let me just answer a few of those questions, then we're gonna continue coding. Um, uh, hello, my beautiful friend. <laughs> Last time you helped me. So thank you. Also a question for you. What do you think you can use JavaScript for except web development and maybe with frameworks like React apps for mobile? You can use JavaScript today for everything, really. You can build Electron J uh, apps, desktop apps from Chrome, from Chromebooks, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. You can build, as you said, mobile apps, web apps. There's even a Node, Node Robots. There's even an IoT community using Node.js to, program like Arduino boards, Raspberry Pis, and P other, other types of PCBs. So JavaScript is uh, being heavily abused, if I may. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's been used for uh, too many things. Uh, so yeah, but you can use it for a lot of stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, not for a week or two, right? So, so I think uh, no matter what you do in life, right? If you don't find a balance, uh, you're gonna you're gonna feel, you know, underwhelmed or, or or burned out, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, JavaScript for well, I I wouldn't call them an embedded because uh, a lot of these uh, PCBs they use very high level stuff. But for example, you have Node robots, right? Uh, Node bots, I think was it this? Yeah. So you have node bots, for example, right? Let me move this thing here so I can read your chat. So you have node bots, for example, right? And uh, <laughs> you can see uh, it's used for, uh, yeah, for Arduino, as I said, right? Uh, and you can see, yeah, uh, I mean, look, at the end of the day, right, what an interfacing language is, it doesn't matter in many cases, right? Because a lot of this stuff is compiled to some low level stuff anyway, right? 
So, so it's very, it's very important whenever you approach some language to understand how is it used, right? Because a lot of languages are used to interface with something that gets compiled to a very low level stuff, right? And then it operates. So I'm sure that this JavaScript doesn't really run <laughs> as such, right? So it doesn't really matter. I think, I think in fact that these types of things are amazing that community has managed because programming is a language, right? Th think about it like, even English, why, why did English language win? Why did English language take over the world, right? Because, because it's easy, right? So language has to be easy to be useful. Only uh, sweaty, basement, uh, no friends types of nerds sit home getting horny about the language because it's complicated, right? Nobody likes complicated language. That makes no sense. Language is a side effect of the things that you want to build. So at the end of the day, right, the reason why JavaScript won is because for the big part, JavaScript is readable and it's easy, right? Uh, and it, that's factual, right? I mean, that's why it's the most popular language in the world, right? So it's not because it's efficient or inefficient. It's because it's, it's, it's people, it's, it's accessible, right? Well, JavaScript, you know, doesn't run only in the browser shoots them, right? So it, depending how they it, it, compile it, right? Uh, JavaScript is indeed in the browser interpreted language, but maybe they're not running JavaScript here in the context of Chromium or, uh, you know, some uh, some browser engine. Maybe they're using it merely just. Maybe they have different interpreter or compiler, right? I don't. I don't actually know the details, right? I mean, I'm sure that they're not compiling uh, a Chromium uh, on the Arduino PCB that has, you know, uh, 256 megabytes of RAM or something like that, right? So, so we would need to dive a little bit more into details. But the point is, yeah, I mean, you can even see that even JavaScript can be found for embedded programming, which is funny, right? Um, yeah. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, the language is just about precision, right? Which is, well, the language is about the problem, right? The language is, uh, I, I, the language is about which problem you're solving, right? The, 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 of course, languages exist to solve different problems on diff different levels, right? You will, you're not going to build a web page in C, right? That's ridiculous. Nor you will build a CPU driver in JavaScript, right? So that is like saying, uh, tools are just this, right? What do you mean by tools? Do you mean screwdriver or a hammer or this or that, right? Because those people who complain, let's say, for example, about languages like JavaScript, they don't provide any solutions to the problem, right? It's like JavaScript, well, okay, well, what, what, webs, what, what web app have you built in a different language, right? Well, I didn't build, build anything. Of course you didn't, right? So we use the tools that we have, right? If we have a better tool in the future, then we're going to use a better tool as we always did, right? Reps, my friend, good evening. So it's, it's really about which problem you're solving. You're not going to use CSS to build uh, GPU drivers, right? That makes no sense. Oh my God, Leo is here. Leo, my friend. That's amazing, he's here. But yeah, I'm actually very happy to answer any of your questions or at least share my opinion. It's been two weeks since I coded uh, Programmer Network, so it's good to be back in this fashion, just trying to help people. Good dude, man. So happy to see you, man. How are you? How are you, my dude? How is everything? All right, let me just see what is what is the issue here. Get it. how is the civil uh, how is that going man? Are you almost done? Type is declared here. What? All right, give me a second. Um let me just try to find my brain is kind of a little bit dead cuz uh, it's been a while, yeah. Type object properties. Ah, I see. 
In November. Nice, man. Nice. Huh, very interesting. We're missing a type somewhere. Where? A little bit weird, to be honest. Additional properties. <laughs> All right, let's try. Um, give me one second. Title video contents. So I have a mismatch between my um, my data, I believe, and the schema, right? Give me one second, maybe because this is. Uh, give me one second. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hard code this here for a moment. Yeah. So it seems that over here we're missing maybe section ID, right? Yeah, that's the issue. I see. I see. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. So let's uh, let's smag this guy here. Okay. Great. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, so I was saying there's a lot of stuff that I've done to, well, the time that I haven't been streaming from visual improvements to, uh, yeah, switching the whole thing to TypeScript and uh, working a lot in Yale. Uh, I've done a lot of awesome components here in Yale as well. Um, and I really wanna kind of merge this, but I don't know where I am. So for example, one thing that I've noticed is that, uh, huh, interesting, okay. So there's a lot of places, for example, where I'm no longer parsing the parsing the dates. So that's one of the things that, that I want to systematically solve. Let's actually take a look at that. So let's go to our Redux store because I've switched a lot of stuff. Um, let me just actually, so yeah, ah, I see. Okay, so I need to, to just fix up a few of these tiny TypeScript things. Yeah, so it's the same, I, I presume, here with the schema, right? Yeah, so get initial state. Yeah, okay. So let me just uh, smack this bad boy in there uh, just for a moment, just so we can see uh, what what is it that it's that we're missing here. So most likely my location is not... Uh... Okay. So it seems over here, right, that we... Yeah. Yeah, for some reason I have an ID here, so maybe that's what it's complaining about, right? I mean, technically we could, all right, I see, I see. It's fine, it's fine. So what I'm actually going to do here, uh, I'm gonna go and say ID, and then we're gonna do type number, right? So that should fix that. By the way, thanks a lot for sharing metal to me. It got me going to concerts like I never have before, and due to that, I kind of discovered that I need to train more social skills and to do that going to this, of course, man, music is my life. I mean, I started playing saxophone as well. Uh, actually, let me show it to you. Uh, you know, I'm, I've been recording a lot of music past month, uh, you know, on all of, all of my guitars here and I started playing a saxophone as well. Uh, I have a, so music is life, man. You should definitely, uh, I'm not gonna play it now because it's very late, but we're gonna have one of the next streams. I'm gonna just play some sax for you guys, but, uh, um, here is the here is the bad boy. So yeah, uh, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, also been making recording some music lately as well. So that's why I was kind of absent as well. I just needed a yeah. Why you got into saxophone? Uh, yeah, I mean I I played trumpet when I was a lot younger in a, in an orchestra. Um. And I love saxophone. I always wanted to play saxophone my whole life. 
Uh, I think I'm. A, I've been also programming some drums lately and stuff. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been fun. I can tell you that much. Uh, what's this complaining about? Wait, sorry. Location string. Let me just fix up a few of these things. Okay, a little bit weird. Okay, I'm just going to do this. But I'm very happy to to hear that, Leo, that I uh, incentivized you to do something. That's amazing. An ID doesn't exist. Okay, very interesting. How come that it doesn't exist? I mean, didn't we add it to the schema? Ah, I see. Do we have to make it required? Maybe. Huh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. Wow, okay. That's a little bit weird. Okay, let's see what's what the hell is happening. And type form data. What? Oh shit, man. I, sorry. Of course you can. I thought you can see it. <laughs> my bad. All right. My bad. Uh, okay. So, um, form data. What? Oh, I see. I see. Use it. What? Okay, give me a second. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna just do this. That this is fine. Get initial state. That is good. Um, it's just uh, 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 I user experience. Okay, let me see how I did that. I user experience. ID is a number and date. So that's actually correct. Yeah. Did the did the TypeScript improve code base in the context of the uh, so so. So uh, what a TypeScript did really well, right, is so the reason why I switched right to TypeScript, uh, this project to TypeScript, right, because it re the, the project reached a point where I needed uh, stability, right? And then on top of that, right, all of these libraries that I've wrote in the past streams, right, like uh, that, uh, like Yale, like our core library, use AJV form, and all of the rest of the libraries that I've wrote, right, the, I wrote them in TypeScript, right? So it helped a lot with that, that now, because, you know, I moved my, my, all my core components into Yale, this yet another, uh, yet another interface library, right? Then we also have use AJV form for form, form validation stuff I wrote as well, right? This library, right? So a lot of these libraries that I wrote, I wrote them in TypeScript. So yes, absolutely due to that, right? It, it helped a lot, right? Uh, did I fix many bugs? Not really. Uh, I surprisingly we didn't have many. I did fix few due to typings for sure. So I mean, but it, it definitely I mean the code base when you write the code base in a stable way, uh, types. Uh, in in simple words, it, of course it helped, but it's not like it changed the code base completely, right? It didn't because you know. Uh, you can write uh, a well solid JavaScript as well, right? It, it, you always could. And then in that case, TypeScript just enforces that and makes it even better, right? But you can still write that amazing code without having types, right? That's that's that is, that's just a fallacy, right? Okay, never mind. So I think this guy is also complaining about the same thing, pretty much. And probably complaining about a few other things missing because this I user profile is actually quite a huge thing, right? So it's most likely complaining about uh, a lot of these things. Uh, let's see. So wait, this is step three. Let's actually, let's go to our API. Where is, where is it? Uh, API, 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 yeah, over here, right? Uh, let me, give me two seconds. Um, let's go with the some uh, guitar, right? All right, going back to this bad boy here. Islam MD, good evening, buddy. Thank you very much, man. That's very kind of you. Uh, all right, so going to our API, right? What did I want to do? Yeah, so let's go to our database, right? 
let's go to our database and let me set my logged in user, the one uh, uh, OB, unfortunately not, not yet. We're gonna do that together. Um, I just haven't been around much with any other technical projects other than my full-time job. There's a lot of work, you know, working as a tech lead, I'm involved into pretty much everything at work, right? So it's been a lot of stuff at work that also kind of distracted me to, to properly focus. But I did a lot of work on programming network, uh, a lot of work. I mean, uh, again, I improved a lot of stuff. I, I, I made a, a huge plan. Uh, of course, these streams, these streams as well are going to have to be uh, uh, more, uh, more, um, how would I say, uh, Jesus Christ, come on, why is this not, uh, organized and stuff, so, uh, yeah, um, why is this no longer working, sorry, give me a second, hmm, interesting, hmm, wow, okay, interesting, did, uh, let me just reload, It's, it's all about priority, right? It's all about priority. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, and as I always said, I have a lot of YouTube videos talking about exactly that, right? It's about priority. It's about discipline. It's about, we all have time to do whatever we want. Let's face it, right? Uh, when people say, oh, I wish I had the time to run or I wish I had the time to go to the gym. Of course you have the time, right? It's just you, your priorities are not set. I'm, when I say yours, I'm not talking to you, shoots them. I'm talking about all of us, right? You cannot have it all, right? You cannot play a video game, watch Netflix, play a guitar and build a project, right? You have to choose one thing, right? Especially when you have a full time. I have a kid and I have a wife, right? So for me, it's even more, right? I want to be with my kid and my wife and I have to go to work. And then, of course, my my spectrum of, of uh, <laughs> free time is, is slightly is, is drastically reduced, right? When you're young, when you have all the time in the world, that's when it's nice, right? But uh, when, when you're a little bit older, then it gets harder and harder, right? I don't know if, if the word harder is the right word. Um, uh, maybe not, but uh, you get what I mean, right? It's all about priorities, right? So when people say, oh, you know, I really want to do this, but I don't have the time, 99% of the cases, you don't actually want to do it, right? Because if you want to do something, you will find the time, right? Uh, so that's why I always say when somebody asks me, what should I build? If you're raising this question, you should probably then build nothing, right? Okay, never mind. Absolutely. No, no, exactly. No, no, but that, that that's exactly my point, right? When you set priorities, it's hard to burn out, right? So when I say this, right, because the thing is, right, uh, the, the premise is, is that you have to do uh, the project, let's say, every day, right? You don't, right? You don't have to do that, right? So, for example, you can start your project and do it once a week, right? I mean, heck, programmer network I've been doing for more than a year, right? I Sometimes I stream, sometimes I don't, right? But it's for sure something that I'm going to keep on doing, right? So so it, it's it's a huge marathon, right? You don't have to, to sit and do something for eight hours a day, you know? You do it for an hour, then don't do it for two, three days or do it for 30 days every, 30 minutes every day, right? Um, So right, so so it's really about how you plan it, right? That's really all that there is to it, right? Uh, okay. Uh, for some reason, my plugin here is no longer working the way that it used to. So it's a little bit weird, uh, to be honest with you. I'm a little bit disappointed. It used to work differently. Now it's. Uh, I was I was able before to. Wait a minute. Oh wow. Okay. What? So what if I do this and save? But it <laughs> wow, okay, that that is that is weird. That is that is what's happening here. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. Okay, I like this. Sure. All vertical. All right. Cool. I like this. Cool. But why is it not doing an update? So that's a little bit weird. Let's say null. 
okay, no, it doesn't doesn't actually work. Our plugin doesn't work. And it is definitely connecting to our database, no question about that, right? Okay, never mind. Uh, whatever. Do I have uh, do I have like PG admin or something? I think I do. Give me a second. Let me try that. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Let's try PG admin. I'm new in this field, but I have quite good ideas about this and stuff, but I only know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, I don't I don't genuinely believe that you know all of that, right? I'm not sure what you mean when you say I know HTML, JavaScript, CSS, C. That's, uh, that's quite a huge statement to say, right? Uh, what, what do you mean when you say I know? Because I know can mean a lot of stuff, right? So it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, I would need more details, right? Huh. Give me one second. Hmm. This is, the other thing is my Redis, right? Postgres P password. That this is the password, right? Maybe the plugin has a new version. Ah, interesting. That could be actually you could be very easily correct. Yes, let's take a look at that. Extensions. Install extensions. Nah, local Ubuntu. No, no, they're all updated. Here it is. They're all updated. A little bit weird, right? So strange that this guy doesn't want to connect. All right, never mind. But yeah, a little bit weird. I I'll figure it out until the next stream because yeah, again, it's been a while since I. It's been two weeks. Okay. Um. So, but I wanted. So this is the step three. This is basically the wizard, right? When you're signing up. So what? What am I actually asked? So here, what do I need here? So, so yeah, so this has to be a partial, right? This cannot be a user profile, right? So what I'm actually going to do here, I'm going to change this slightly a bit. So this interface is going to be a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to smack this bad boy here. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to nuke this stuff. So what it is that I actually need in this component, right? Uh, ah, I see, I see, okay. <clears throat> So, and give me one second with the questions. I'll be with you in a moment. So what do, what do I have? I have a username, tags, username, tags. I see, okay. So we have the first name, last name, username, tags, uh, country, about, and that's it, right? So this is really what we have. This, this is what we're gonna have here, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna really do this as well. Then we no longer need an ID here. I'm just gonna keep this tidy up. Username, first name, last name, about, country, and tags, right? Yes. Items number, that's correct. Yes, tags, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And then if we get back here, Silly, thank you very much. Thank you. Good to good to see you. Hmm, interesting. Am I wait a minute, so let me just go. So username is here, right? Yes, first name, yes, last name. Avatar. Avatar, yeah, avatar shouldn't be here. Yeah, okay, got it. Cool. Avatar also shouldn't be here, that's correct, nice, awesome, okay. And let's, let's see over here, so the form itself. Let me just read the questions. I'm starting to learn React, is it good? Uh, React is very good, like many other libraries, they're all good, Vue.js, Angular, React, Ember, whatever, they're all good, yes. 
advice for you, just build things and read official documentation, really. I can build decent websites and web application using them. And yeah, I don't know all stuff, but I know that much to build a site. But I rarely do project due to my studies. I'm studying. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's good, man. Just, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, apply for a job. If you already can build things, I would just look for work. Even even freelance work, that's what I would do. Uh, but I, you need some plan. You need to, I need, you need to figure out what it is that you want to do, right? UI settings, social profiles. Okay, so this is wrong, right? So if we take a look at the update user, we'll probably notice here that, uh, yeah, this is basically the issue, right? So I think most, yeah, the problem with this partial stuff in the context of my use AJV form library that I built, right, is 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 that if I use the partial here, right, uh, my, um, my AJV schema, my another JSON validator schema doesn't like that. And the update user really does potentially take all of these things, right? Uh, so we could cast this, I guess. So I guess we could say something like as, right? <clears throat> uh, partial, I guess. And this users is my namespace for types dot, uh, what is it? I user body, right? I guess, could we do something like that? I user profile. Yeah, so that's not gonna do. So we have a slight mismatch of types here, right? Because we call this update user uh, fun um, function or method, right? Uh, in, in different places uh, for different things, right? So it's true fundamentally here in my Redux RTK, right? I have the Redux RTK uh, tank. Then I have my service here, right? My HTTP service. And the service itself, yeah, takes really any 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 object right in this context it takes something from the user that's also wrong this this really should be i user body right uh what was this thing uh potential username first name last yeah yeah that that would be more accurate right and th this we could then try saying hey well you know what uh give me one second actually so if i go here i user body yeah 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 i think that would that would do it right so if we go back here we could say, you know, you know what? Uh, let's actually attempt that. So yeah, we have a. That is one of the uh, one of the. I wouldn't say downsides, but yeah, one of the annoying things with the JSON Web Schema AJV AJ, uh, is that now we have a, the types and we have the schema itself, right? So, and then actually, what we're gonna do? We're gonna also say here instead of this, we're gonna say uh, users. So we're gonna have users dot uh, user body, right? Uh, and then let's see what it is complaining about now. So it's probably gonna miss something, social profiles and UI settings, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is, right? Let's just give it what it wants. So, oops. Um, yeah, that is technically correct. And then we have social profiles, which is basically, yeah, shit. I'm just yeah, I'm checking if uh, uh, Copilot is gonna give me a hand here, please, my friend. I cannot code. Ah, what's what's going on with VS Code, really? Okay. All right, I see. Huh. Okay, cool. And this partial stuff is problematic, right? I guess, yeah, I mean, if we would probably do this, right? Let me just check, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit painful, I must admit.
just bear with me, fellas. I'm going to answer your questions in a moment. I just need to fix this. It doesn't really like my... Um... Oh, shit, yeah, yeah, I know what. Nullable, I think, true. This is what we're missing, right? Few... So what is nullable true in the context of AJV, AJV schema? What is nullable? Well, it's any potential thing. What does it mean? Well, it's anything that can be optional. That's what nullable really is, right? So in our context here, we have I user body, which has this class name which is optional so that we set that to nullable already and then well i mean i would i suspect that that's really the only thing that's nullable is there something else that's nullable here <laughs> type primary background or text Yeah, come on. It's so annoying, but it's it's good. It's it's worth it, but it's annoying. Maybe the whole thing should be nullable. I don't know. Can I say nullable true? Is that the problem? No. Ah, this is the problem. Shit. Okay, I see. Ouch. All right. I remember. Yeah, we need to I need to do something about this. Sure. So this was at least one of the problems, right? Is there more of them? Let's see. Man, this is a little bit annoying. And I believe, wait a minute, is this because? Let's try to smack this to ChatGPT, right? Because I, I, I don't know what it is and I don't want to spend more time on this. So let's just smack this because uh, Copilot kind of sucks for this type of stuff. Genuinely. Um, let's go to, let's go to our uh, Jean Code Van Debug, my own LLM. Let's, let's see if it's going to help us at all. Arrow codes, uh, recently, man, recently. I mean, all of the libraries are written in TypeScript, but uh, front and uh, recently. Let me read the question why this is. 
What is the difference between React.js for JavaScript and TypeScript? The only difference is that one has the types and the other doesn't. That's all. As you can see, I have, so as you can see, shoots them, I have several of my own uh, LLMs. Of course, if you're paying, you get this ability to create your own. So you can go to my GPTs, right? You can go here and you can create your own. As you can see, I have one for Golang. So I have, I have one that I made for my saxophone learning. I have one for guitar music theory. I have one when I'm learning Golang. This one is to give me business ideas for programming network. And then Jean Code Van Debug is, um, yeah, I obviously use it for programming, yes. Yeah, that's not true. Huh. That is weird. Yeah, but UI settings are not really required, so... Is Jean Code Van Debug better than... Uh, I, I, it's, it's hard to tell, right? I mean, these are not specialized LLMs, right? You, you might think that... You might think that when I create these things, right, that they're like small specialized LLMs. They're not really, right? But the model has been taught a little bit better. So I've been prompting it. I've used Jean Code Van Debug now for a couple of months, right? So for sure it got better, right? But it's not like it's like a, its own specialized model. Uh, it, it's not really. But I, but I would say that it is better. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. Cool. Uh, so let me let me try to to. Yeah, so wait, uh, so I, I lost my thought. Yes, yeah, so so let, let's just regenerate this because I stopped it. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, but this is not optional. Yeah, this is a little bit annoying. Uh, it's not actually fun to be very frank with you, but... Uh... Yeah. I'm just gonna try some some stuff in here. Yeah, but it makes no sense. No, never mind. All right. Let's see what the bot said. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, it's it's most likely something super silly somewhere.
And why is this an object? Yeah, that's definitely not an object. So why did it? Why is uh, why is this guy hallucinating here? All right, there we go. Okay, that's weird. Jesus Christ, man. Why does it have to be hard when it can be easy? All right, well, that's what it is. That's how it is sometimes. All right, hopefully this is the last one. Get initial state. User experience. Andy James. Absolutely, man. Let's go. I think it. he must be somewhere on this list. I'm sure he is... Uh, Andy James, wait, uh, I, I must have other plays, but let's let's play After Midnight, that's my favorite uh, from him, uh, ah, I love the taste, let's play, uh, let's play After Midnight, alright, cool, great, great taste, cool, okay, so let's see, what is this, so AGV form, I uh, user experience, right, so most likely over here, right, we have, yeah, so screw this, right? Let's just say here, uh, you know, uh, users uh, dot i user experience, and uh, let's adjust this thing so it fits the user experience schema. What does this have? What does this have? Um, so what are we actually missing? We're most likely missing something, I suppose, right? Are we actually? Let's see, because I don't see that we are. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We have the same taste when it comes to Andy James. These are yeah. When I was young, I watched a lot of his guitar lessons on uh, Lick Library and, and some other platforms. That's where I kind of found out about him. And thank you everybody for your follows. Location. Okay. That's uh, that's fine. Yeah. So so the only suspicion I have now is that we have mismatch of types as well. Uh because yeah, of the date. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, I see. Employment type. So this fellow over here is an enum, right? Uh, but this fellow over here probably is not an enum, or it is an enum, yeah. So let's compare them, right? Are they the same? Seasonal, apprenticeship, apprentice, yeah. Internship, contract, freelance, self-employed, part-time, yeah. So they are in fact the same. Okay, so let's see. So it is complaining about the employment type. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. okay, I see. So it's it's a, it doesn't really like this, right? And I wonder, like, yeah, I, that's the problem. But I don't think that we could give it this. I mean, it would be cool, but I don't think so, right? But it would be cool if I can say users uh, dot yeah. Can I do this? Because this is technically an enum, right? Okay, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Let's see. So yeah, so yeah, that's, so can I just say string here? I think that's what we're gonna do. Okay, great, we can, right? So are there any more, are there any any other tiny annoying uh, TypeScript issues that we have? I don't think so, no. Okay, so that's great, that's great, uh, that's awesome. If we go to our local host, so that's great. Uh, so one thing that I, when I was making this huge refactor, is that there's a bunch of these dates, right, that, uh, yeah, are now, they're, they're, there's no utility employed onto them, right? 
applied onto them. So let's see, uh, do I, uh, let's see how do we get these. Are these in an RTK store? All right, so let's go to articles view, right? So let's go to our app. Let's, uh, let's search for articles, I guess. Yeah, over here. So let's go in there and this is where we kind of get this. We have an infinite list, great. And then we have an article here as a list item, great. Uh, so what we could do technically to, to uh, systematically solve the date issue is that's why I kind of removed it because it was all over the place. I want to solve this systema systematically, right? So I have this infinite list component. This infinite list component is always going to get uh, the list item itself. And then it's going to get a lot of data here. So it's going to, for every page, this is basically pagination, right? As I scroll down, there's, you know, there's paging, right? So what we could technically do it right we could operate on the data and not as part of the view component or to say as part of the uh, list item component in this case which for this guy would be an article itself which is here right so instead of me now smacking in you know show display data or whatever uh, this created at I can already convert to uh, um, user-friendly form before that happens right and that's what we're gonna do so if we scroll a little bit up, we have the infinite list, which I suppose... Gets the rows, okay? So let's uh, let's see and what feeds the infinite list itself. Uh, I Yeah, so here are the rows are coming from this use infinite. It's a generic basically, right? So, and then there's created at... Anonymous gifter. Thank you very much, man. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Okay, that's great, right? So now if we go into this use infinite, right, that I implemented as a generic, right? We need to figure out here. So what would be cool, this is always a little bit of a, you need, you just need to make up your mind. You need to decide systematically where it is that I want to handle these things, right? Of course, if we were fetching these things in, a, in our Redux RTK store, then, uh, you know, uh, we would we would probably handle these display dates there. Uh, okay, but either way, we're going to solve it somewhere. So what we could in theory do right here, we are looping through all of the rows, right? We could practically do it here, right? We could say, hey, dot map, right? And yeah, and this row, uh, we would have to check, hey, is there some date on it, right? So this can be expensive or cheap, right? But we can say, you know, if uh, object dot prototype dot uh, has own property, right? Uh, created at, for example, right? Uh, or updated at this is this is a little bit uh, obviously uh, silly right because um, we could just as well also ask hey is any of the property uh, a date right but then we have to loop through every single uh, uh, we have to, then we would have to loop over every single property of every single object right so we're not going to do that we're just gonna because I know my system I built it inside out I know that every record is either gonna have this or this here we can then say well okay great you know what then then you know make sure we have to make sure we don't mutate the right and um yeah this is going to be a little bit pro uh, problematic now because of the types right because of the type t right so the way that we can solve that here i believe this uh, we need to hmm interesting um yeah we'll see about that but basically here i have some utils i think i have date utils that i wrote yeah so these are my date utils, right? So as you can see here, I have a bunch of different types of utils in this project. And these are the date ones. What I really want is, I think I have some ago, something ago, yeah. So I have this static called created ago, right? So essentially what I wanna do here, I wanna say, hey, wait a minute. You know what? I'm gonna say here, date utils, which is just a class with a bunch of static methods, right? So I don't have to create a new 
object or, or singleton or anything like that. So date utils uh, dot uh, created a go, right? And this, right? And it's going to complain about that. It's fine. And uh, yeah, we need to, yeah, we need to do this carefully because let's do it separately. So, and then we're going to improve it. So I'm going to say here created at. And then we're going to do the same here, right? It's better to duplicate a bit, but have clarity than um, be too smart, right? Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, uh, the what is it called? Uh, Copilot goes uh, crazy sometimes. Okay, updated that. Okay, cool. Now the reason, yeah, this saying, hey, bro. I mean, this is generic, man, Alex. You, what the hell is? I don't, I don't have this date, right? I, I don't know what you're talking about, Alex. Right? That's the problem now. So technically, we need to tell this this component, this utility, this fetching mechanism that I built, hey, that, you know, it's going to be generic, but, you know, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. That's pretty much what we really want, right? So, something like that. And it has to work as well, right? But yeah, we need something like this, right? Oops. So let's see where we can do this, right? So we have the items of type T. And I, I would like to do it somewhere here, right? But I don't know where, right? So I would need to I would like to do it something like that, right? Wow. Wow, that mouse DPI went crazy. Never mind. So how can we extend this T here? How can we... Um, uh, okay, you know what? I'll just uh, ask ChatGPT. So I'll just go here and say, please extend this T with optional properties created at and updated. Yeah, let's just not waste the time. All right, cool. Yeah, this is, yeah, extends, obviously, yeah. Hmm, okay. Well, it's not really, nothing is obvious about this, but uh, let's give it a shot, right? <clears throat> I don't want to extend the object. I don't want to extend the... Can I do like... Yeah, this is basically what I want, right? That's awesome. Can I potentially make them optional? And assuming that uh, the reason why this guy is complaining uh, uh, da, 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 um, yeah, but why is it not? Yeah, yeah, that's that's weird, right? TypeScript, I believe, is not actually very clever in this context. Let's try this, even though that makes no sense, right? Then we don't really need the the object assign, right? Yeah, okay, cool. And we're gonna do the same here, right? So let's remove the object assign, and we're just gonna say, hey, you know what? If this And this is not a row, this is really a record, rather. So we're going to have to do some. Yeah, okay, cool. So response.rows.map.row, right? So this is a little bit problematic because this seems to be a row, not, uh, not a uh, record. Let's actually print this. Because it, it's been very long ago since I wrote this. So I don't actually remember, to be very frank with you, all the details. But I'm almost sure it's... Okay, never mind. So it's good. Yeah, so it's not really a row. It's a record. 
let's call it record. So let's uh, rename this. I think we can do it like here, right? Rename symbol record, right? And then our date and time should be now correct. You can see 23, but it should really be correct in all places where we're using this utility for, or this uh, infinite thing for, right? So if I go to where else in the platform do we have that? Uh, yeah, I can't think of any place right now, but uh, that's good, right? So now we are basically saying whenever I have any infinite scrolling somewhere and there's dates involved, right? We can always convert them using this created a go utility we have, right? This fellow over here, which uses this format distance strict from date F FNS, uh, yeah. So that is, I think, reasonable. I think that's uh, acceptable and clean solution because we then have don't have to worry about. So whenever you're building user interfaces, right? Whenever you have state machines like Redux or any of these tools, right? And this is what I try to share with my team at work, my, pretty much half of my career, right? Always try to deliver data to your component that's as dumb as possible, right? So if you can avoid. Uh, if you can make your components to be view only, that should be your always goal. Your goal should always be how can I make my components to be pure and to know exactly, right? So 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 try to, to do that, right? You can see here, I'm trying to do this, some of this data transformation under quotes here, because I want my components to be as dumb as possible, right? I don't want them to know anything about transforming dates. I just want them to get some data and show it on the screen, right? That's really all that there is to it. All right, cool. So, so. I'll be very, I'll be very careful shoots them with, with my wording, right? So, so how do you use like some sort of clean architecture? Do you use any, which patterns you're using, right? It doesn't matter, right? Uh, that's why I don't, because there's so many ways to do things in like, no matter what you're doing, right? You might prefer this or that. Where are you going to put your fetching mechanism? Or, or of course, of course you want to have some of these basic abstraction patterns, right? Of course you want to, for example, you can see here, I have basic services, right? So for example, if I go to my, uh, let's say, um, services, right? I have abstraction over Axios that I wrote, right? So I'm using Axios really with this caching uh, extension. I have my own Axios um, wrapper that I use it for interceptors. Then I'm using request and response interceptors. I have my own Axios, I uh, just wrap the, the methods, uh, the existing ones. But then I have my services basically just like this, right? So for example, you know, uh, show me the users services, right? Oh, here they are, right? This is all of the stuff I can do with the users. And then in my, if, if I, you know, some certain things I'm using Redux RTK for, if I go to my store and then I go to my user actions, my tanks, right? You can see that this is login. So I have a async tank in Redux RTK that's calling the service itself, right? So that's very simple. The reason why it's good is because it's very simple. Because this is my always definition. If I can make something simple, then it's good. If I don't make it simple, it, it inherently isn't good. Sometimes things are not going to be able to be simple, sure. But in most cases, they can be simple, right? If you apply these basic patterns to, 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 to things, right? Uh, so this is basically really all that there is. Like every single async tank looks like the same. It's very generic, right? And then if we go to the actual tank itself in the Redux RTK in the reducer, right? So if we go, to, if we take a look at sync GitHub repositories as part of the actual reducer, right? You'll see that, I mean, what is what is fetching data, right? What is a promise, right? The great thing about Redux RTK, right, is that the syntax itself is that, where is my bloody reducer, man? Here, right? So the reason, the reason why Redux RTK is really awesome compared to the old Redux syntax where you had to spread your state so you don't mutate it by accident is this, right? For every single uh, async tank in Redux RTK, you have these three cases, really. I mean, what can happen with a promise? 
promise can really be pending, resolved, fulfilled, or rejected, right? So really, like, Redux RTK is following that principle itself. You see, for example, when... So, for example, if we go to login here, right? What What's happening? Hey, you see how easy it is to read this state. It's beautiful, right? When user presses the login button, the user is in this... I have these state transitions, right? So for each for each async operation, I have a state transition. So when user is low, presses the button login, what is happening? When user is in this user logging loading transition state, right? When user logs in successfully, meaning when that login operation is fulfilled, what I describe what does that mean? What does it mean for my app that user is logged in? Well, it means that user transition is now user login success, user logged in, is authenticated, variable is set to true, and then I take the data from the user, so user logged in, my APR responded with some response, right, some 200, and then I said that. So so when you look at this stuff, you could say the, the con of it, the maybe something that's not so nice is the fact that there's a lot of repetition, right, so you can see but that is also the beauty of it, right? So it, yes, it's repetitive in that sense, but it's so easy to see, right? No matter what asynchronous operation you ask me about now in this whole project, I can tell you in two seconds what it does because what is really a state, right? State is your representation of your expectations towards something, right? When I do X, I expect these variables to be Y, right? So in my case, what does it mean get authenticated user? When, when it's loading, it means it's loading. I can use this for a spinner, for showing some skeleton. When the user loads, what does that mean? Well, it means whatever is written here. So that's the beauty of state machines. I think a lot of people misunderstand uh, Redux and a lot of uh, the state machines, right? It's because Redux and state machines are not there to compete with the use state with uh, a lot of a lot of people have asked me in my career like what why don't you know why don't you use i don't know like uh, context instead of redux these two things are not comparable context is a way to avoid prop drilling it, it's a completely different api it has a different purpose right i mean redux React, you know, React Redux library really is a context. So it has the Redux store as its state. And then it passes, you can subscribe to that state anywhere in your components so you can avoid prop drilling, right? But having a state machine is very useful in a bigger project, right? Because you can clearly see your state transition. So when you have a huge project that has, I don't know, 150, 350 asynchronous operations, then, you know, state machine like Redux helps a lot, right? Because you can see this is way easier to read here. Then go to my view components and look, okay, what is happening? You know, I'm looking at the button, at the span, at a paragraph, and then I'm looking at a bunch of state-related operations. Like, I don't like that. Right? I don't care. I want my components to receive some data, show it on the screen as pixels, and that is really... So that's why I say your components should be, whenever possible, as stupid as, as possibly as you can possibly make them, right? Yeah, that's, that's how it is. Um, and you can actually see even the, this common system, right? If we go to the Redux DevTools, right, which is your, which should be really your best friend, right? If we take a look at the Redux DevTools, right, you can see that, you know, if I do anything with this comment, right, I go ahead, I delete this comment, right? You can kind of, this is the beauty of it. It's so powerful, right? You can see that what I did when I clicked on the, uh, I flagged basically the comments to be deleted. We can see the action comment ID is this content action delete. And then you see, when I clicked actually remove, what was happening? Well, my comment was in a pending state. It was removing the comment. Then it fulfilled. Okay, cool. And then something else has happened. So it's so nice that you can preview your state transitions. Again, especially when things are complicated, right? It's very, very powerful. All right, what was I doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to actually check the dates. 
Uh, give me one second. Let's play. Let's play. Um... I thank everybody for your follows. Very much appreciated. New okay, so it's so strange. Oh wow, okay, really? What? Did we like what? That is weird. Why? Huh. So we have this fuse instance here. Where is this? And where is this uh, profile repositories? Okay. All right, wow, so this was unused, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let me just check one thing. Where is our Yale? Uh, here is our Yale. What did I want to check? I wanted to check something. Let me take a look at one thing in my API. I just wanted to confirm certain things. Uh, yeah, so all of the IDs in our project are actually integers, right? So, so that's good. Uh, I'm just going to move this to done because I don't have any custom UID 4s or anything like that. So that's great. Okay. So we have some states. Uh, we have some state warnings. This kind of success, uh, something with memorization and stuff. Um, tragic Val, can you uh, can you clear your cache or something? Have you been on the website before? Let me actually try incognito myself. You shouldn't be, maybe you have some very stale old state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the issue. Clear your cache for this project. I'm sure it's going to work. And also, yeah, we have this issue that I have to fix. 100%. Yeah, please do and let me know. What have I done here? This allow profanity. Yeah. Actually, yeah. So I, 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 yeah, yeah. Never mind. I'll let you know in a second. Sequelize sync. Sure. Faker. What have I done here? Yes. Program network AJV. What's the last latest version of that? My pleasure, man. Thank you. Let me just check uh, some of these libraries that I've built. Uh, what was it? AJV. What did I want to check? Yale. Uh, Conex. Okay, so that's actually correct. So I'm just going to go back here. And let me just try to remember why have I done this. Aha, uh -huh, I see, I see. Okay. No, that's correct. That's correct as well. Actually, I need to deploy that to production. Give me a second. Um, This as well should be technically fixed, right? Yeah, it is. Publish should be at least okay. 
publish. Oh, okay, so we have the sorting issue now as well, I believe. No, actually, no, it's fine. It's fine. All good. All good. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, I will. Yeah, it's a little bit weird that I haven't deployed this to production. So let's uh, let's push this to prod, I I guess. So that's really that's new, right? Package JSON. I removed the inspect for debugger faker. Yeah, I actually, yeah, uh, did some new stuff with the faker. This we will not push. Okay, nice, nice. That's awesome. Okay, let's try. Let's try to push this to prod. This allow profanity. Yeah, meetups controller. What did I do here? I see. Cool router. Okay, that's yeah practically correct. This allow profanity. Sure. Sure. Cool. Yeah. All right. Great. So this is really the only thing we don't need to push. So let's. Uh, I don't know. Uh, adjust schemas and required attributes. It's been it's been a while since we um <clears throat> deployed stuff to production, right? Ah, shit. Cool. Let's go to our GitHub. <clears throat> And what did I want to do? What did I want to do? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at our CI. Because I have a lot of stuff set up here. Let's see if my all of the stuff is fine. When did I deploy the last time? Take a look at my CI here. This was two months ago. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's wait for this. Let's see if it works. Hopefully my backup of database still works. I think uh, I've used the what? What did I? How did I implement this? Was it using? Uh, shit. Yeah. Never mind. It's gonna work. All good there. Okay. And I wonder now what prevents me to deploy this huge front end change. This huge, absolutely huge front end change. Um, so yeah, I dislike that this is clickable. Okay. So let's go maybe. Okay. Uh, let's go to our Yale library, to our front end. This this whole UI I built with my my own front end library. So let's do just a little bit of work there. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, and uh, let's say a storybook, right? Cool. So the only thing that I dislike currently with our tip tap implementation, right, which is this beautiful thing here, and I improved it a lot, I think is that you can actually click this when uh, the editor is empty. So that's a very simple change that we could do in our core library. So let's go there. <clears throat> and how did I implement this? I think I implemented really good. Uh, click outside, blah, 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 toolbar, editor content, and we have these things. Tip tap actions, yeah, so it's it's right here, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool, I, I have an idea, all right. So tip tap has this is empty state. Um, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, I'm just gonna search globally here in the tip tap directory. It is empty or something, right? Yeah, public static is empty. So, nah, not really. Not editor state selection empty. Editor state. Okay, but I think this editor has uh, is empty. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to these actions. Do I have an editor instance in here? No, I don't. Okay, so we're gonna have to pass that uh, actions. What did I call it? Yeah. Um, Let's say is editor empty. Do I have the editor is empty, right? Yeah, cool. And then we're going to go to these actions that I've created and we're going to extend this with a boolean. And then what I'm going to say is like, hey, you cannot click uh, confirm if 
uh, if the editor is empty, right? It makes no sense. What will, what do you want to submit, right? So we're going to say if editor is not empty and uh, button includes the whatever, don't worry too much because this is pretty complicated, if I may. So I'm going to do this. And now we should actually, no, but we still want to show it maybe, but we don't want to, we want to make it non-interactive, right? So yeah, let's do that instead. So this icon, um, okay, yeah. So we're going to maybe do something like this. If it's not empty, do this, right? Otherwise, pass a null to this uh, on-click handler, right? Or actually, yeah, just do a n n no op, right? So we'll just do this, right? Sorry, I'm going to do null. Give me two seconds. Let's do... Um, Let's do Rubina. Rubina is a is the wife of Joe Satriani. He wrote this song for her on his first album, I believe, called um, "Not on This Earth." I actually met them both. Uh, I bought a VIP ticket once, and this guy is my favorite guitarist. Cool story, man. Okay, cool. Um, is the editor empty? So that's great. So now it should, yeah. So the buttons should still be there, but it should. Oops. Let's go to our storybook, but it should not be really calling this confirm. Okay, cool. So what we could do really, if we want to go cr that crazy, we can add a tooltip here saying you cannot, there's nothing to confirm your editor is empty. Let's maybe try it, right? Um, so I think I do have some tooltip already component that I wrote. So I, we can just say tooltip. Yeah. I think it takes an ID or something, right? Let's call it, uh, confirm tooltip and then content we're gonna or what does it take text cool story Alex so if I hover over this it says cool story Alex I don't know if I can actually see it because there's chat there and stuff like that yeah but either way uh, so here we're gonna say hey if uh, if editor is uh, empty if editor is empty we're gonna say um, There is nothing to submit, maybe, or whatever. Otherwise, no. Oops. Or empty string. Huh. Do we need that? I don't actually know, to be honest. It's maybe an overkill. There is nothing to submit. Yeah. Maybe it's an overkill. Okay. Let's, uh, let's fall back. Um... We'll maybe just change the styling of the button or whatever, right? So we'll, yeah, we can change the fill of this icon based on this specific state, right? So here we're gonna use our class names module, right? So we're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna use class names. Now I'm gonna smack this base style here. And yeah, the text, so this thing is gonna be based on a certain cr criteria, right? So we're gonna say here something like this. No, not really, no. So text primary, uh, text color, uh, blah, blah, blah. If editor is uh, not empty. Uh, and then, yeah, we can do a different one here. So we can just say if it is empty, um, gonna say text uh, oh never mind never mind sorry so text primary text color
Yeah, something like that, right? So you can see if it's uh, if it's. But is empty is not sufficient, right? It has to be valid, right? And we don't actually have that information here, so that is a little bit problematic, right? Because you can see I can type the character, but this form might have validation on, which so that is uh, that is a little bit annoying, right? Um, <clears throat> So we could extend the tip tap with an additional uh, prop, right? Is valid or whatever. Um, I mean, we could use the error as well itself. So if there's an error, uh, you know, you're not really clickable, right? Yeah, I, I don't actually know. I don't think it matters that much, but yeah, I think this is better. So now at least you can't uh, hit it, right? Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And then this hover effect also shouldn't be there, right? Yeah, okay. So that's good. That's 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 good. Okay, cool. So um, let's deploy this to, to NPM. Uh, what's the current version? Yeah, so I'm gonna bump this guy uh, very quickly. So we bumped that fella here. Uh, what do we have here? We've extended this with it added to empty. Yes, we extended these uh, props. Do we have tests? Did I write the tests for the for this component? Let me check. There's a bunch of tests I wrote, but I don't know if I wrote for this thing. 140 tests. Okay, so not for that. Okay, cool. Um, Oh shit, yeah. So we're gonna push this to master, then we have to create a new tag. Ah, let's uh, generate a commit message here. Yeah, that's completely useless. Uh, disable tip taps, confirm button if empty. All right, cool. So we're gonna push this bad boy. Then we're gonna create a new tag, which is gonna be this, and then we're gonna push that tag. Right? Yeah, cool. We go now to GitHub. We go to Yale, and then we go to our CI over here. We should see that stuff being uh, being pushed. Cool. All right, great. Okay, cool. So, uh, what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna close this guy here. Uh, fuck! Did we actually push, deploy production? Okay, nice product. So stuff is live. Okay, great, cool. So lastly, we're gonna go here. We're gonna search for Yale, and we're gonna bump it here once it's pushed to npm. So if we go back here. And then we go to Yale, right? Yeah. So we're gonna wait until this is 142. Close this. Uh, la 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 la. Yeah, cool. All right, so this is good. The length has passed. And then I guess we can maybe even push the new front end there, right? I just don't remember what else. Did I finish the comments? I don't remember. I think I have. Yeah, I think I have, yeah. Okay, we'll try that. We'll try to push this to production as well. Okay, cool. So let's wait for this. It's publishing to NPM now.
do, do, do the programmer network music. Let's see, what is this? Let's play some metal. No, yeah, let's play some cranberries, actually, some rock. All right, great. So this is deployed. Beautiful. Um, nuke this. Let me PNPMI this. And I'm going to dev this. Let's take a look at this now. So yeah, so it's no longer clickable, at least now, yeah. Okay, can I edit this? Yeah, there's that overlay issue there, unfortunately. We'll need to fix that. Is it maybe because of the zoom? Yeah, there's that uh, kind of... Uh, Did I hear metal? Hmm. Okay, a sec. Strange. Hmm. Com comment details, okay. Ah, huh, interesting, okay. So this fella now is... Do I know Slipknot? <laughs> of course. I've been to Slipknot once. So yeah, so now it's complaining about this little trick that we did here, right? But why? Muhammad, good evening. I'm not using socket IO because I'm not. I don't have a use case for sockets yet. But uh, once we, if we ever build a chat, a chat inside of the platform or something like that, right? Then we'll definitely use web sockets. Yes. Now, are we going to use socket IO or sock JS or? native web sockets just for fun who knows right but uh no right now i'm not using uh, socket io no uh, wh uh, why would it be in real time what is what is the value of that I see. I mean, technically we could do that, right? It's just, is there value to this, right? The thing is, I mean, very few platforms would implement that, right? 
because uh, that UX would be pretty terrible as well, right? So there's a lot of implications of that. It's not a technical implication to say it's, it's implementation itself. Using anything that's real-time has to have its case, right? A real-time example is chat. Feed is not a real-time. Even Twitter is not using WebSockets on their feed, right? Why? Because that would you would be scrolling and you would stop reading at something and then two seconds or microseconds later, you would have no idea what the hell have you been reading, right? So it's not about the complexity of... The, you don't have to have WebSockets to have real-time. You can do polling, right? And you can just call your endpoint every interval, right? So the real time doesn't only mean uh, web sockets, right? Uh, so so it's it's always about user experience, right? Rather than the technicality or of the protocol or a side effect of, of such, right? So it's more about you know if uh, I don't know if this view was changing in real time, what would be implication of that? And implication would be pretty bad, right? All right, friends, let's let's chat a bit. Let's chat a bit before I round up. Uh, and then we're going to see each other tomorrow again. But let me see if there's any questions, any people that I can help. It's good to be back, especially seeing people that... Uh... So real-time data only used... Uh... Real-time uh, only used... D depends. I mean, uh, so the notification system in um, programmer network is not using WebSockets because, again, it's there's no use to it, right? Uh, implementing WebSockets and scaling them, implementing them is easy. Scaling them is not so easy. Uh, so, so again, I mean, it's it's about uh, it's about using the tool at the right time and then for the right thing, right? Uh, you should avoid any complexity as long as you possibly can until that complexity is needed, right? So you go with HTTP as long as you possibly How much space you got? I don't have much space. I mean, you can see I can touch the, the bookshelf. But I have a lot of space over there. I'm going to show you the whole office. I'm going to record a YouTube video for it or whatever. I promise. I, I did this uh, the last two days. I was reorganizing the office and stuff like that. So you guys are going to see it on the video. I promise. Um, it, it's quite new, actually. It's quite new. So I'm going to make a video. I just didn't finish yet. My my guitars, you know, I have like a bunch of guitars. They're all in the corner now. Um, there's a lot of stuff. My saxophone is here. Uh, I need to... So a lot of stuff has changed. I didn't finish everything yet. Uh, silent the music, sure. Thanks. Got it, got it. There it is. But yeah, that that is what it is, fellas. Uh, I mean, yeah, what can I say? It's good to be back. Uh, the streams are going to be a little bit more... Um, I would say organized, I really need to make sure that uh, I, I know why I stream, right? Because as I said many times, uh, it has to have a certain meaning to me as well, right? So, uh, so yeah, I'll try to organize it in such a way. Uh, we are about to, to, to merge this, a lot of these front end changes. So we'll see, right? But either way, we're gonna see each other tomorrow. As well, if you guys are obviously around, please come by. Uh, I'll be streaming for sure. Then I'll, uh, you know, I will not be streaming every day clearly, but I think I'm going to be streaming maybe three times a week or something like that because I have other things I have to do and I also have to build a platform, etc., uh, etc. Et but uh, yeah, let's let's see. Uh, but either way, you know, if you can, um, yeah. Send a message in programming network. Try to try to log in there every every now and then. Many of you who've been sticking around uh, watching me are early adopters. So if you are wondering how you can incentivize me to stream, if you want me to stream, if you're finding these streams useful, well, at least you know 
try to use the platform, try to give some feedback, try to share it with people. That's the only thing I expect. I don't care if you subscribe or not. That amount of money is absolutely meaningless to me. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, if you're wondering how you can chip in, well, the the thing that I would want you to do is, yeah, just uh, try to go on Programmer Network and try to every now and then to just, yeah, write some thoughts, try to write comments, uh, whatever. And uh, yeah, we'll also finalize these other features soon. So yeah. Leo, likewise, good night, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Good to see you, everybody, again, and uh, I'll catch you guys up soon, okay?